Hello, this is John Sims with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video is about configuring trunk to soft modem transfer on the Avaya IP office. This configuration can be a very useful method of remote access. Before we start the configuration aspects, let's first cover a few notables. The capability to transfer a call over any trunk type to the internal soft modem has been available since IP Office Release 7, and as you see in this first bullet, this will also free up traditional modem sensing duties of analog trunk port 1. The call routing to the internal soft modem can be accomplished by call transfer directly or through a voicemail menu transfer action. And keep in mind, only one soft modem call can be active on the system at any time, even if multiple ATM4 cards are installed in the IP office control unit. The first step in our configuration is to change the DHCP mode from disabled to dial-in and we're going to ensure that we have at least one IP address in the DCP pool. If we need to adjust the pool settings we'll click advanced. In advance we can edit the start addressing of our DCP scope, the subnet mask, default router and in fact the pool size. From here we'll click OK and return to the previous form. The next configuration step is to set up the remote manager RAS user. So under user We'll select Remote Manager, and IP Office Manager is warning us that we still have left the default password in place, so we'll make that change now. We'll change the password to something suitable for the customer, and click OK. Our next step is to make an extension that's targetable in the system. So we're going to look at the current extension list and find an extension number that's not in conflict. We're going to go to the RAS dial-in service and under the dial-in account we're going to add extension 250. Again, we're taking careful note that extension 250 is not a current extension on the system and that way can be a target for the RAS dial-in account. Now it's time to adjust the incoming call routes on the IP office system. You'll see I've pre-configured an incoming call route on line group 88 to match a specific DID. With that DID match and note that the bare capabilities is for any voice, we're going to send that to destination 250. Keeping in mind that again, destination 250 is now a targetable extension for the RAS dial-in account. Now that we've finished our configuration, I'm going to hit the save icon and save the configuration by sending it back to the control unit. It's a mergeable event. We'll hit OK, enter our service username of administrator with the default password of administrator, Click OK, and then we'll send the config back to the core unit. So you see I've launched System Monitor, which is the tracing diagnostics tool for IP Office. We're going to now set some filtering. So under Filters, Trace Options, I'm going to head to the PPP tab, and we're going to set Security Transmit, Security Receive. So that way, if we have to troubleshoot a connection of the trunk call to modem transfer, we can um, see authentication details as well in the tracing, specifically with the remote manager account being used by the RAS service. We're now going to use dial-up networking on another laptop to test our PPP connection. So I'm going to use the new connection wizard and select next. And then we're going to start setting up our connection. So connect to internet, select next. We'll set up our connection manually so we have control over our options. Select next. We will use connection using a dial-up modem. Select next. On this screen, we're going to name the service. So we'll put in IP office system and then click next. And then we'll enter the phone number that we're going to contact the IP office on. So again, this is the DID number that was set in the incoming call route on the IP office system. That's the number we're going to dial into. Here we're setting the remote manager username and of course the remote manager password and confirmation of that password. Clicking next. Final step here is just to set that desktop shortcut um, for dial-up networking. Now it's time to actually use this connection so we'll have to enter the password one more time for the remote manager account and we'll select dial 
So the motor will go out and try to connect to this DID number that's set to then route into the soft modem on the IP office unit. As you see on the screen, we are authenticating and receiving an IP address from the DHCP dial-in service of the IP office unit. If we bring up a command shell and run IP config, we'll see that we've received a suitable IP address from the IP office unit for our PPP adapter. So using an IP office manager, we can do a file open and using the broadcast address, find the IP office core unit and we'll connect to that core unit and receive a configuration using the administrator account. Just keep in mind that now you are transmitting and receiving your data over a much slower modem connection than you may be used to. So pulling data in and out of um, manager um, might be a little bit slower than you're used to. But as you see, it is easily accomplished even over this soft modem connection. Another quick test is to launch SSA otherwise known as system status application. As we log in, note that we're pointing directly at the IP office core unit address using the administrator account. SSA will now fetch data from the switch and pull it into the application. Once the data is retrieved from the switch, we'll now be presented with our monitoring screens. As you see the system summary screen, I'll click on extensions to show that we have a good solid connection with the IP office core unit. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing avaya.